So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a new image and I'm going to make sure it's video size at 1920 by 1080. I'm then going to open the other image and I'm going to select the whole thing, copy it and paste it into the new one. Now it's a bit too big because the original image is something like 4000 pixels across so I've got to resize it. So I normally choose free transform and I just grab hold of it and make it smaller. Now the reason I've gone through the whole of this rather than just opening the image is that as you'll notice the image is sort of squarish and the video itself is widescreen. So what I've got to do is select the bit of the square image that I want to use. That's why I made up a new image and then pasted something into it to make sure I had a widescreen image to play with at the end. I'm going to get rid of the guides, they're just irritating. And this is the tedious bit. If you do it really well you'll have nice edges, if you do it badly you'll have bad edges. So this is where you spend a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the twig for a start, choose the lasso and then just try and lasso Mr. Twig. As good as I can I'm just lassoing the twig here. Go all the way around it. And there we are, I've now selected the twig. I'm going to zoom into it just to see how good my selection is because I've made a few mistakes in different areas. Select the lasso again and then if I want to add in any extra bits you hold down on the shift key and then lassoing some extra bits and it adds in more bits to your selection. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate but of course the better you do it the better your results are going to be. I've got a bit here included that I don't want all that extra black stuff there so what I do is get the lasso again and hold down on the alt key and then go around and select the bit I don't want and it takes it out of the selection because I could always just chop it off a bit later on. But anyway I've now selected the twig and I'm going to copy it and then paste it and then you can now see I've got a new layer. Looking at the layer palette here you can see I've got the background which is nothing, I've got the original image and I've got the twig. If I just click on the little eye there it turns off some of the layers so you know, turn off the background you can see the twig, turn off the twig and you can see the background. Now you notice if I turn off the twig in the background there's still a twig. All I did was copy it and I've left the original still there. So I've got to fill that in somehow but I'm not going to do it yet because I've got to cut out the parrots and all the other twigs as well. So I've got to fill the whole lot in at some point so I'm going to do that in a minute. And you have to fill in the holes because as you move around in 3D you're going to see through to where these things came from so those holes have to be filled in at some point. Main thing though is I've got the twig. It's not perfect so I'm just going to do a bit of refining. I'm just going to select that bit there and then trim it and chop it down a bit, maybe tidy up a bit at the top. Again the more time you spend on this the better your results going to be. Let's just zoom in and maybe use the, uh, the rubber here just to rub out bits of it to get better looking edges. Right, so that bit's done. Now I've got to do the next bit. So go back to the original and do the same with the front parrot. So roughly lasso it. I'm doing this very, very roughly. And then copy it, paste it. Hey, the parrot's in the right place. That's fine. Let's turn off the other layers. And you can see I've just got the parrot isolated, but as you can see, I've made a right mess of it. So I'm going to have to go through and tidy that up. Let's just zoom in a bit and then let's just start chopping things out. Now you might say, hang on, you've got a magic wand there. Why aren't you selecting the magic wand and then clicking on the grey bits and then using that to select the areas and deleting it? That's because sometimes the magic wand leaves very raggedy edges, which look a bit awful when you come to moving things around. So I don't like to use the magic wand very much. Let's undo those. I'll just step backward. And instead of using the magic wand, I'm going to lasso things again, and I'll get a much nice, smoother sort of anti-aliased edges. So I prefer to use the lasso to select and delete things rather than using the magic wand. So I've got the front parrot done. 
Let's go back, get the main image up, and now I've got to do the back parrot, which is again a matter of lassoing it, copying it, paste it, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. You just sort of go through and do the legwork until you've got everything separated out into separate images. So now in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I did earlier. If I turn off all the layers, you can have a look at the individual ones at a time. So I've got the original front twig, the next parrot, the parrot behind that, and I've got the background. And of course, if I turn off all those other layers, you'll still notice I've still got all those parrots and twigs in that background image, which is no good because I do my nice 3D image and see other other stuff behind it. So I've now got to fill those in. So now what I'm going to do is zoom in a bit, just to say this parrot here. Now what I've got to do is lasso him, and I'm using Photoshop and I'm using CS6. It's the same with the Creative Cloud version. And what I'm going to do is lasso whatever I want to fill in. Go out to Edit, Fill, and Fill is normally when you fill it with a colour, but here I'm going to use this thing called Content Aware. Content Aware Fill is a really useful function, because basically what it does is you lasso an area, you choose your Content Aware Fill, click OK, and then it fills it in, and it tries to drag in stuff from around the edge and fill it in with something sensible. Not necessarily done a perfect job, but let's try doing a little bit more. Let's go and select just this area of the twig here. Edit Fill, Content Aware. Notice how it's actually filling it in with something reasonably sensible. Let's select a few more bits. Most of the time it actually does a pretty good job. In some cases it doesn't get it right. But in most cases it's filling it up with something sensible. Let's see what happens if we do this parrot here. See there, it's, it's filling it in pretty well but possibly filling it in with enough to get away with it. Let's have a go at this tail here. This is a really good example. Fill in the tail. Wow. Looks like there was never tail there in the first place. Now, at the end of the day, remember, I'm going to fuzz up that background quite a bit. So I'm not going to see this properly anyway. But if that doesn't work, you've got to do something else. So the other thing I do is I'll come over to here and I'll use the Clone Stamp tool. Now, the Clone Stamp tool, basically choose it, Hold down on the Alt key and click on something. You notice it changes to a kind of target. Once you've clicked on it, let go. Move to where you want to paint. And then as soon as you start painting, whatever your original target is over, you can see where that crosshair is, it gets painted over the area which I'm painting. So basically, I'm just copying that wicker where that crosshair is over the twig. Come down here, paint some walker in, and yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's, it's obviously not was what was really there, but it's doing a pretty good job. It looks like you can't tell. And come down and, ah! Now, instead of wicker, I'm painting in another twig, because my crosshair's now gone over the twig. So, let's just go alt-click somewhere else. Click up a bit higher, and then start painting. Oh, I'm just painting some wall wicker in. That, that's okay, that, that gets away with it. It's just very simple. I'm painting in another part of the image and it, you know, filling in the area nicely, filling in the area well enough. I'm going to come over here and sort of make that look like it goes up into a, an edge. Come down here and go over these twigs and just carry on filling it in. You can see, clone stamping is a brilliant way of getting rid of stuff that you don't want to see. Now I'm going to get rid of this twig by clone stamping some leaves onto it. Let's just move around here and a bit more leaves, a bit more leaves. Again, what I'm doing is not producing something which is 100% perfect. And I'm producing something that's just good enough. So you just carry on until you've got to something where you've filled in most of the background. And there you are, after a bit of fiddling and painting, I've got a new background. Now I need to save these out as separate images, because this title needs four separate images. You know, in Photoshop I've got one image with four layers. For this title they need to be four separate images. So I'm going to turn each layer off, and then do a quick save as, put them in a folder so I know where they are, and I'm going to call them what they are. So the layer I've got active at the moment is the background, so call it background. Select the next layer up, save that out, and so on. And that's it. I've now saved out four separate Photoshop images of each layer.
which I can now take into this title and do my fancy effect with.